Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our candidates forum for the open seat on the Board of Selectmen. My name is Katie Goodfellow, and I am the town moderator. With me is Joanne Upham, who many of you have seen interviewing our candidates on Lake Cam or coordinating our Lakeville Arts and Music Festival. We have all six candidates running for the open seat here tonight. All deserve our respect for considering to run in the first place. I'm sure that they would share that this is no easy undertaking. A few days ago, Joanne and I met and read the many questions submitted by our voters for tonight's forum. We organized the questions by topic and eliminated, eliminated duplicates. We merged some questions where appropriate and narrowed down the questions to six for timing reasons. We felt that these questions would give you, our Lakeville voters, a good view of the qualifications, viewpoints, and positions of our candidates. If time allows, we have additional questions and we'll try to get through as many as we can. To keep this forum focused on all six candidates, we chose questions that everyone on the panel could have an opportunity to answer. Questions that were addressed to a specific candidate were tabled, but we did try to incorporate the underlying point of such questions, reframing them so that all six candidates could address the issue. None of our candidates have seen these questions in advance of tonight's meeting. The word debate has been used to describe our, our event today, but I would like to clarify that we are participants in a forum. There is simply not enough time to allow candidates to debate and rebut each other's comments or for the audience to levy questions to a single candidate. Finally, all questions that were submitted but not asked this evening will be given to the candidates following the forum. It's our hope that they will respond to these questions in social media or other means available to them, including Lake Camp. Now for tonight's format. Our candidates are seated randomly, corresponding to the seat number they drew upon entering the room. Each of our six candidates will have two <clears throat> minutes to introduce themselves, explain their reason for running, or describe their history of service to the town, if any. Ms. Upham will then ask the first question to the candidate in the first seat. She will continue asking questions moving along the table so that each candidate will have an opportunity to answer a question first and second and so on. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer the question. We ask candidates to keep their answers to two minutes. When you have 15 seconds left, I will give you a 15 second warning so that you know to wrap up. Of course, you don't need to use your full two minutes if you're able to answer the question in less time. Succinct answers mean that we'll have more time for additional questions. Candidates, please do not engage in personal attacks on other candidates. Audience members, please refrain from shouting or calling out questions from the floor. If anyone is disrespectful or prevents the forum from carrying out its purpose, he or she will be asked to leave. After Ms. Suppum has asked all the questions, candidates will be given one minute to make a closing statement in seating order. They can use this time to add a comment, to respond to something already said, or to clarify a point. Again, I ask that everyone be respectful. This is the first forum of its kind in my memory, and I hope that we can continue to hold events like this in the future. I'll now turn over the forum to Mrs. Upham, who will ask our candidates to introduce themselves and begin our question answer session. Okay, Mr. Sankowitz, could you please tell us a little bit about you? Um, very well. Um, my name is Sylvester Sankowitz. Uh, I currently serve on, uh, this is my 10th year on the planning board. Um, and. Um, I, I enjoy that. It's a, we're an active group, and uh, it, it seems to be working pretty well. Um, I got uh, I did five years on the uh, uh, old colony school committee, uh, and we have we have small committees there that uh, uh, we, we also have subcommittees there because it's a large committee, uh, and the subcommittee I was involved in was budget, uh, and I uh, ended up by being the by chairing that committee in my last year. Um, I've got about four years in on the water advisory, 
uh, which was uh, a little known now, but, uh, but back then uh, it was important. In, uh, uh, we did a lot of work that was uh, instrumental in uh, no longer owning the water tower. Uh, which the you know we needed the water tower, but we couldn't we couldn't run the business, and so you know to, to prove that out carefully, uh, and some other and some other oh a master plan. Uh, I'm, I'm currently involved with the master plan and the master plan implementation committee, which is really useful to me because it has a lot of uh, um, if if you actually know what the numbers are of uh, if you of you know how much older we're getting, how much faster, how fast we're getting older. Uh, that we're still growing, and we're still growing at a rate that's probably a little faster than we'd want to. But uh, but I can prove it, and uh, other you know other folks can just guess at it. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's real real interesting, and we'll have uh, within six months that'll actually be out on the street uh, here in Lakeville. Uh, my personal, uh, my personal stuff is I'm, uh, I'm old, uh, and uh, uh, got about 45 years in some phase of construction. Uh, you know, starting uh, mostly starting from cabinet work and uh, things, moving on to uh, carpentry, to uh, um, you know, foremaning and uh, superintending construction. Uh, I ended up. Uh, after I kind of after I wore out uh, physically, uh, I ended up teaching uh, teaching high school. Uh, I was teaching shop in uh, Everett High School, uh, which was a lot harder than construction, by the way. Um, and uh, after I retired, was when I got uh, was actually when I got involved in town stuff. Uh, I've always been involved, you know, wherever I was, but it, it was never seconds. it was never town uh, government. But uh, I'll try to sneak something in about me later. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fleming. <clears throat> Hello, for those who don't know me, I'm Joseph Fleming. I moved to Lakeville in 2013 with my wife and family, children of three. Um, I went to Bridgewater State University. I did my bachelor's in management. I also did my master's degree in management. Um, I served on the Lakeville Finance Committee for three years from 2015 to 2018. Um, I'm a finance guy. I've been doing it for 16 years, a hands-on financial uh, service, ranging from private sector to municipal, uh, as well as consulting. Um, been doing it for about 16 years. I really enjoy working with all the people that I meet on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you're probably wondering why I'm throwing my hat into the ring uh, for the Board of Selectmen. Well, I just want to continue to give back. Um, for those who also didn't know, I ran for Treasurer Collector in April of 2019. It was a grassroots campaign. It was a very positive experience for me. And uh, I didn't win, but I didn't care. I just wanted to get involved and, and help out. And that's why I'm here today to, uh, to express you know, my interest for the Board of Selectmen seat so I can continue to give back to the community and to help both generations, old and young, um, so we can take Lakeville to the next level. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Knox. How are you doing? I'm Mark Knox. Uh, I've lived in Lakeville since uh, 1973 when my parents moved here, raised my family here. Uh, obviously, currently still reside here. Um, about five years ago, I got civically involved. I currently sit on the Conservation Commission and on the Planning Board. Uh, people ask, or the question is, why I chose to run for a selectman. Uh, I think I can help. I want to help the town, uh, and I, with my current board service, I think it can be, be beneficial. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. LaCamera. <clears throat> yeah, my name is uh, Rich LaCamera. I've lived in Lakeville for 45 years with my wife and four children who are all grown up now. <clears throat> I, um, some of my experience here in the town of Lakeville I've been on the Lakeville Finance Committee. I was on the Lakeville Finance Committee for 16 years. Lakeville Board of Selectmen for nine years. I'm currently a Lakeville uh, Library Trustee for four years. I was the Town Administrator in Rochester for eight years and the Interim Town Administrator in Hanson for, for one year. I've served on 
on numerous committees uh, throughout my years of experience of uh, 34 years of municipal government that include the uh, master plan committee. I represented the town in the southeastern regional planning and economic uh, development uh, district. I was on the uh, Lakeville Development Committee, which uh, developed our own industrial park up off of Route 18. I've served on five building committees. It includes the uh, addition and, and renovation of the Aponaquit High School, uh, the new middle school, the COA, the library, the building you're in here today, tonight, and the police station. Um, some of my community service, as most parents do, um, they coach their children in their sports, and that was basketball and soccer and Little League. I was the uh, Pontiquet High School, Pontiquet Athletic Boosters Club president uh, for six years, and I'm currently a 25-year member of the Lakeville Lions Club. Um, I think that the, this position is, uh, is very important, and uh, for the five -month, current five-month term... Fifteen seconds. Uh, I think we need somebody that has a lot of experience. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Medford, your turn. Hello, my name is Jesse Medford. Um, recently I was elected as one of our park commissioners here in Lakeville. Um, I'm also the chair of the Open Space Committee. Uh, those are the two positions that bring me to wanting to become a selectman for the town of Lakeville now. I want to share those interests with the people of Lakeville, see if I can help out if, if uh, the voters are into saving the open space, saving the parks. I feel I'm the person with that uh, experience that I can bring that along. Um, I'm also, I, I work in the telecommunications industry. I'm in the Massachusetts Army National Guard, serve as first sergeant. I've been serving for a total of 28 years now in the military uh, combined active duty Navy, Army, and National Guard. Um, I've also served in the uh, athletic, the Pontiquet Athletic Booster Club as vice president for a few years. You probably see I share a lot of things on social media for them right now. That's, that's my role there is just keeping Lakeville informed on what the Lakers are doing. Um, also, one of Lake Cam's newest directors, uh, I do a lot of volunteer with them, some play-by-play -play at the football games, um, and uh, you know that's that's about it for, of my my history and what what I can bring to the table. And uh, you know, I, I just want to help preserve Lakeville for the people of Lakeville that like the way it used to be, and and maybe you don't agree with how it's going into the future. And I, I'd like to be there to to help you preserve it. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Day. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> first, I'd just like to say uh, it's amazing to see everybody here tonight, and thank you for making this possible for all of us. The engagement uh, over the last few months has been wonderful. Um, this has been exciting, and no matter what happens, um, I'm excited to be a part of this kind of historic moment here in Lakeville. Uh, why I want to run for this position is I feel that I bring kind of a fresh perspective um, as a, a person who's relatively still new to town. Uh, however, uh, my wife and I have been here for three years, and this isn't about me running um, against a particular issue or against a particular candidate. This is me wanting to work for the town. They have given us so much over the last three years and increased our quality of life that it's time for me to give back. And I'm looking forward to bringing what I think is a unique skill set and an even temperament uh, to the role. I've spent the last 20 years of my career in high-pressure institutions where we've had to work together with folks that had varying goals, different mindsets, different cultures, different diversities. And I feel the board needs somebody who's willing to come on board and be a third voice that is looking for uh, fostering an inclusive culture where anybody here in the audience or watching us at home feels that they can come to, whether it's the board or a committee or a commission, with their ideas. Um, if they see a process they think can be improved, if it's a, a project they think is valid to the town, and nobody should feel like they couldn't, right? I don't want to turn anybody away because of perhaps a personal belief. I think the board should be bigger than that. I think that uh, we all in any position for town need to set aside personal beliefs, personal vendettas, and be there for the town and doing what's right for it. Uh, I think that I'm a person that's very process oriented. I want to look at things as they come before us and say, does this make sense for the town? Is it going to maintain everything we have, but make it better? And can it be done in a financially responsible manner? 
And if that means spending seconds. a couple of dollars to save many more <clears throat> down the road, then it's something that we need to continue. So I hope that you'll enjoy this evening with all of us here giving our answers. Uh, looking forward to getting started. And again, thank you everybody for being here. And I hope you'll consider me a, a valid option on November 5th. Thank you everyone for your opening statements. We will start the questioning. If at any time you need the question repeated, just please let me know, okay? And we will start with Mr. Zenkowicz. Um, first question is, several members of the town have expressed frustration with what appears to be a lack of transparency in the dealings and decisions by the Board of Selectmen, including, for example, the hiring for open town positions and conducting real estate transactions. While we cannot address specific issues right now, what would you do to ensure transparency on the board? And what steps do you think, if any, should be taken to reassure the public that the board is acting in the best interests of the people that they represent? The, uh, I assume you're talking about the board of selectmen. Yes. Um, from, from what I can see, um, they, um, once the minutes, uh, they do great minutes if, <laughs> once the minutes are posted. Uh, and, uh, I don't have any trouble, uh, figuring out what the, uh, board of selectmen did. Uh, we have to make sure that whoever is tasked with that job, you know, has enough time to do it because it's a very, very important job and it's more important now with the, the, the new regulations that uh, um, the the particular um, I, I was I was I'm on the planning board. We we didn't have anything to do with uh, any uh, um, any real estate transfers ever. Uh, only the board of selectmen does. Uh, they have to do that wisely, but we do so little of it, uh, or the town does so little of it. Uh, I, I, I wish the town had kept more of its properties because there's some open space issues that it could address with it, uh, uh, you know, in a positive manner. But when, when the town owns so little land and it uh, gets rid of it, if occasionally, and this is, I think it's only occasionally, if occasionally one comes out and they don't make much money on it, well, that's just a, the rub of the green. Uh, it, uh, I, I'm, I'm afraid I can't be of much help on this on this question. Well, uh, I think they did. Do I you think have they any idea? Well. Do you have any ideas about transparency? How to be more transparent if you're a board of selectmen? I, I have. I have a lot of. Uh, yes. Uh, I think, uh, for instance, uh, I'm very, very happy to talk to anybody at this meeting, and immediately after this meeting, uh, about anything, for as long as they like. But as soon as I leave, uh, I don't want to talk to them anymore, and I don't want to talk to them on uh, on any social media at all, ever. We have now uh, the time. Pardon? <laughs> Stop you. I'm sorry. Okay. Joseph? Same question. Yes, you want me to repeat it? No. Transparency, um, I think, is key. I think it's vital, especially where this isn't a private entity of a CEO or a private boardroom. I think transparency is how work gets done. I think uh, it needs to get better. Uh, I mean, the videos are made available to us on Lake Cam, which I think is a great resource, but I think it takes a little bit more than that. Um, personally, I feel like it's, it could have um, office hours for the Board of Selectmen where the, the general public could come in. I also think that um, social media can be leveraged to a certain point, but it's only can only take so far because we can clearly see through this campaign not everybody utilizes social media, where some people do. And at the end of the day, uh, it's the Board of Selectmen's job to make sure that every Lakeville resident is heard, seen, at least given a chance. So it has to be a two-way street. It has to be an open-door policy. It has to be uh, and uh, fostering environment of communication and 
having a value. And, and again, I value people when they come to me with ideas. I value and listen to their comments, especially where they're the ones that may be doing the actual work or have a concern. Uh, but at the end of the day, transparency is what really gets the job done and keeps everybody on par so there are no surprises. And I don't think we uh, want to have surprises where people are not informed. So again, transparency is very, very key. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Knox, do you need me to repeat the question? Um, if you don't mind. Sure, I don't mind. Several members of the town have expressed frustration with what appears to be a lack of transparency in the dealings and decisions by the Board of Selectmen, including, for example, the hiring for open town positions and conducting real estate transactions. While we cannot address specific cases right now, what would you do to ensure transparency on the board, and what steps do you think, if any, should be taken to reassure the public that the board is acting in the best interest of the people that they represent? Well, in short, from the Selectmen standpoint, I think open discussion, it's probably would seem ad nauseum for the selectmen to discuss points, because I'm sure at some point it becomes Groundhog Day when they have to make their appointments, their annual appointments for commissions and boards that they do. Other than tonight, with what we see here before us, there's a lack of uh, interest in getting on boards, and so when they maybe reappoint people with a rubber stamp type, let's take a vote, done. Maybe that should be vetted a little bit better on an annual basis, but I'm sure that's also, they've done that because lack of activity of people, lack of interest in people stepping up to give civic service. So I just think that discussion at a selectman's meeting might need to be more lengthy and hear all persons that want to speak to it. Maybe, and I think the townspeople need to go to meetings to ask these concerns, not just bark about them afterwards, mm -hmm. but to actually attend a selectman's meeting. They're, they have public discussion at every one. So if somebody had concern, they could go. Uh, in addition to the information discussed at a meeting, I think that the town or somebody within the town offices probably could promote a little bit better what's either gonna be on an agenda or what was discussed at a meeting before and after. It's, people have to go look for it, um, and if that could be made more mm -hmm. readily available, I think that would help. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. LaCamera. Yeah, um, first of all, as far as the employee hiring is concerned, I served on the selectman for nine years and hired a lot of people, and uh, the first thing we always made sure was, uh, what is the job responsibility, number one? Number two, is to make sure that the hiring practices were treated equally for all the hirees and all employees, not changing it from one to the other. And I think that, unfortunately, we had a little of that this past year. And one of the things that I would do is make sure the policies and procedures that are in place that uh, would make sure the hiring practices are consistent from a clerical all the way up to the town administrator. Um, so that would be one of the things that I, I would like to see improved. Um, as far as the uh, uh, sale of uh, real estate is concerned, I've been involved in many real estate transactions as, as a member of the Board of Selectmen, including Betty's Necks and Ted Williams and, and the property up on Highland Road. Uh, one of the things that, you know, needs to be done, you need to understand, you know, what the property is worth. So the first thing you do is come up with an appraisal to say, oh, this property is worth X dollars before you even make an offer or you're going to sell that piece of property. Number two is if you're gonna sell a piece of property, you should have a minimum bid to make sure that uh, uh, the bid is uh, a bid that is acceptable to the town. And so you put a requirement said the minimum bid is X number of dollars. And then the third thing would be to make sure that uh, it's advertised properly and that, uh, uh, you know, a piece of property, the building that was just sold recently, you know, was advertised in the Middlebrook Gazette. Well, all of us know the Middlebrook Gazette is really not a very well published. Fifteen seconds. A, a newspaper at this time. Uh, Fifteen seconds. Well, I get a lot of others, but I won't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And Mr. Medford. Uh, well, transparency. I, I think since I've been 
leading the call for the last six months for or six weeks for more transparency. I've noticed an improved effort by the town to be more transparent in this time. Uh, more postings on their Facebook page, sharing it more to um, our popular Facebook groups in the town, Lakeville Helping Lakeville, Lakeville Complaint Box. Um, very useful groups to this town. A lot of communication, both directions. And, uh, the, and the town's been starting to utilize those more, um, not just their official page, but uh, town employees have, have been using it, being more interactive in the last few weeks, whereas I, I think they used to just kind of sit back and, and uh, not, not really try to you know, amplify the message. For example, if you're, if you're selling a property, put some signs out, amplify the message on, on these you know, popular uh, Facebook groups. Um, you know, it, it just, you know, not that anything was done wrong, it just wasn't very out there for everybody to see. And, and that could be tightened up, things could be improved, the town could, could make more money, save the taxpayers money in the process. So, um, just, it's, it's really little improvements that need to, be making, uh, need to be made, and I've just been noticing in the last month that they are making this attempt. So, um, you know, I, I commend them for that. Uh, Another thing, you know, we all, those of us who are on boards need to make the little bit of effort ourselves to speed up the minutes, uh, get them uploaded to the site so everybody can access them. Right now it's hard to find any minutes 15 that are seconds. newer than June. So we need to be involved ourselves and speed that, speed that up and to vet our uh, fellow members of our groups better, make them, you know, more aligned with what the town needs in that in that group. Time. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Mr. Day. Thank you. Uh, so in the caboose position for this question, I have the, uh, the task of actually saying that, yeah, there are a lot of good points that uh, my fellow candidates here have made and I do agree with. So whomever came up with the question or reworded it, I think job well done because it, it shows an interest that a lot of us share here. Um, I agree that you know there are things that the town seems to be doing better in the last few months. I agree with Mr. Medford. Uh, with Mr. Fleming, I agreed like we wanted to have sit down with the selectmen once every month or every other month. Great idea. I think these are ways that we can help get the word out. Uh, there's also in beyond real estate and positions. I think um, as someone who's been going through and reading town bylaws, um, you know when town meetings come up and such, it always interests me on in how old some of them really are. Um, so when it comes to what are our processes perhaps for posting a a uh, piece of real estate that's for sale or a job posting, whatever it might be, uh, the bylaws may have been great in 1994, but think about what 1994 might have been like. Perhaps we should have a, you know, a, a law in town that says we will go back and review all bylaws that are older than X age and try to you know, modernize them so that they fit with what we're using today, um, either socially or technology-wise, so that some of these things are more easily accessible. Um, and some of the, the things that come out of some of these transactions, we're always very focused on maybe, you know, everybody gets in a tizzy after it happens and then the town comes out and says, well, here's all the facts behind it. But sometimes the facts, they don't give you the, the whole story, right? And then people just say, oh, you're just giving me the bare minimum. It's like handing somebody a, a slideshow presentation, but without the narration. They go through your slides, like I still, okay, so I've got the information, but I don't understand what it means. Um, so we could probably do a better job of explaining why these decisions were made what the processes are that go into you know, whatever that transaction was, the hiring process was, so that folks don't feel like they're being subverted anyway, but understand why it was done that way. And then come up with, well, okay, so that's how it happens. We can do better in the future. Um, and I would say frustration's okay. You're, you're here to keep us in check, and you should keep us in check. So if you have suggestions, and I'll make some of these ideas better, please let us know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, we're moving on to question number two with Mr. Fleming. The position of selectman involves making difficult decisions. Please tell us a time in either your personal or professional life where you were forced to make a very difficult decision. How did you approach the decision and what was your thought process? And how did you get to a resolution? Good question. <clears throat> well, I'm a numbers guy. I've been a finance manager and consultant for many, many years, as I said before. Um, you know. Because I've had positions of, say, control and chief financial officer, I'm always looking at the numbers. And when I look at the numbers, they actually tell a story qualitatively as well. 
Um, some decisions have to be made, um, whether we're, we're growing, whether we have to lay off people, uh, whether we have the resources to grow organically, or do we have to go through mergers and acquisitions. Um, again, numbers don't lie. Uh, sometimes I've been involved with laying people off. Not a good feeling. You know, I don't like to lose any resources. Uh, just to give an example, you know, with uh, when I was on the finance committee, when it came to the budget time, you know, we're always looking to squeeze that extra value out of the dollar, especially because they're they're so sacred for the town of Lakeville. And there were concerns that I would see where we would raid from stabilization accounts to pay for other things, um, whereas process could have been done a little bit better or better execution or, as you were speaking of, looking at the actual the process of it, looking at the documentation and, and seeing what actually is in there. Um, and again, we can't, in my opinion, further kick that can down the road because I am concerned about the finances of the town of Lakeville and, um, you know, having that lay of the land, you know, I think we need to do a better job at, at making those decisions that affect ultimately your tax dollars, my tax dollars, and our future <coughs> generation tax dollars. And sometimes cuts need to be made. Again, I don't like to make cuts, but if we change for the good, sometimes we don't need to make that cuts. We just change our behavior. So I think Lakeville can use a better behavioral shift when it comes to making better decisions that ultimately affect us all. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Knox. Would you mind repeating sure, your question? Sure, no problem. The position of selectman involves making difficult decisions. Please tell us a time in either your personal or professional life where you were forced to make a difficult decision. How did you approach the decision? What was your thought process? And how did you get to the resolution? Letting an employee go. That's a tough decision that I've had to face on a couple of occasions as an employer. Uh, it's not taken lightly and to mm -hmm. deliberate over something like that you look from all aspects of the financial needs the, the person themselves uh, and what how it got to this point was it or could it be correctable before those measures are taken and to finally either reach that decision or not okay thank you mr. la camera yeah, uh, two incidents. One, I, while I served on the Finance Committee, uh, we were in a serious recession in the 80s, and the state cut our state aid by 40%. So when they cut state aid by 40%, you know what that means. You have to lay people off. And it was very difficult, you know, during that time to later go tell the employees that they had to be laid off. Because at that time, the voters, you know, everybody was hurting, and, you know, they didn't want a tax increase. But after we laid off, you know, the people that we had to, which was a significant number of people, we went back to the townspeople and we asked them for an override, and they, they passed the override, and from that point on, we were in very good shape. <coughs> the second situation was that, you know, when I was on the selectmen, uh, once again, uh, it was a very difficult year, no, no increase in state aid, another recession had, had taken place, and uh, we had to tell the employees that they were not going to get a, a uh, salary increase or a cost of living increase. I personally went around to every single employee and told them that they weren't going to get an increase. And that was very difficult to do. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Medford. Well, uh, the, the most difficult decisions that, that I've had in my lifetime were, uh, were military related. And I've been to Iraq and Afghanistan. and. Um, you know, I, I was a, a leader in both of those places, and, and I had to make decisions that were, you know, possible life or death decisions for, for other people. And, um, you know, I have to decide who goes where, who, who, does, who does what, and I, I'm putting lives on the line at the time. And I have to, you know, base my decisions on who's most qualified to do this, who, who would be the safest in the situation and, and make sure everybody comes back home safe. And, um, you know, it's, it's just uh, you know, a lot of mitigating circumstances on what, you know, how you make your decision and who you choose to send. And um, those, those are definitely the, you know, the, the toughest decisions that anyone will have to make in their life. And I, I've been through it multiple times. So. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Day. 
So similar to others, I feel personnel decisions are often the hardest. Um, in my current role um, with the company I've worked for for the last 10 and a half years, I'm part of a program that essentially is a mentorship role where new employees can come in um, and when they need somebody to act as kind of a mentor and a leader to help them understand uh, you know, where they are, how things work, educate them better on the certain skill sets that they need. Um, it's one of the most rewarding, but also can be one of the most difficult uh, positions to be in because you have folks that come in and they hit the ground running, they're doing great, you can send them off and see them be successful and grow their own careers. But you also sometimes have um, individuals that don't work out the way you hope they will. You try your hardest, you work and give them the, all the tools that they need to succeed. And you know, you start to, over time, look at the situation as a whole. I think this has a lot of parallels to you know, uh, local projects where you know, we're putting all these resources in and are we seeing a benefit? Is there any increase? Um, are we making the community now suffer to some degree because this individual or project is essentially turned into a poison pill that is affecting others? And sometimes you have to make that decision to, you know, report in and say, this just isn't working out. And I don't think that we're seeing progress here and continued investment is going to be bad for everybody as a whole. And you don't like those decisions because you're affecting people's lives, right? They have their own children and family and you don't want to be the one to say, we've got to cut bait here and let them go. But you also have to look at the greater good because this is going to affect all the other people that are around them, whether they're other employees or other customers, or it's almost endless. Um, so personnel ones are very difficult. It's tough to put the emotion aside, but sometimes you have to. And I'm sure anybody here that's been through it themselves understands that you know it's, it's tough to think about the ramifications of what you've done, but sometimes you have to. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Yeah, um, just from listening. Um, the, uh, uh, for me, it's, it's uh, personnel, personnel decisions. Uh, anybody in uh, anybody in construction uh, always tries their own businesses too, you know, and stuff like that. So you you wind up at every at every stage of that. Uh, when I wasn't doing that, I'd I'd be on awfully big jobs, and there'd be an awful lot of people coming in and going out, and it was awfully important to them uh, that they weren't going out and. It just that uh, just wasn't the way. It's just not the way the world works. I mean, it, it's a uh, it's a big turnover, and uh, but you but you feel bad about it, you know, a lot. This this I don't know how it affects the uh, with the selectmen on to what. There's going to be another recession, <laughs> uh, so you have to think about that. Uh, but uh, but we, you know, for now we just hope that it doesn't happen. Right now we're we're absolutely. Uh, um, we, we have everybody working, uh, including here in town. Uh, and uh, so everything seems so great, but uh, yeah, it's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we will move on to question number three with Mr. Knox to start. Do you agree with the planning board's proposed overlay for marijuana businesses, both sales and cultivation, that limits activities to the industrial parks of Millennium Park on Route 44 and Lakeville Industrial Park on Route 18. Why or why not? Yes, I do agree with it. I think it's a great plan compared to what we have in place right now. Uh, because the current zoning we have allows marijuana in all industrial sites, and there are actually, I think, five industrial zoned parcels in town, one very close to the high school, uh, one as the uh, old Edwards sand pit where Route 18 and 105 separate, um, and then where the solar farm is that uh, spreads it all around town. And I think that the original intent was to keep it in a, a specific business district, and the industrial zoning seemed like it worked, but the zoning overlay works better. Okay. Mr. Camera. Well, I was the one that brought a petition to the town last September or October for an overlay district to restrict where the marijuana facilities would go because, just as Mark pointed out, the industrial land all over town um, is what it, sh what it shouldn't be. And so now we have seven uh, facilities, marijuana facilities, six in the industrial park, and one going up on uh, 44. So uh, I believe in that restriction, but at the same time, I don't think that the selectmen informed the 
the uh, town residents about the options having to do where marijuana could have gone and given them the right, you know, to vote whether they wanted it or not. And so, yes, I support this change because this should have been done in the first place. Okay, thank you. Mr. Medford. I believe there should be a limit on how many number of uh, marijuana businesses we have. However, no, I do not believe that it should be all steered into two industrial parks that are predominantly run by a couple of people. I, I believe all the industrial parks should have a fair shot at these businesses. And um, you know, they're, they're zoned industrial for a reason, just like the, the other two where all the businesses are getting steered. So I, I think all the owners of industrial parks should have a fair shot at these businesses. Thank you. Mr. Day. So I would say that as I understand the overlay district that's been suggested, I would generally be in favor of, um, short of any other evidence from the other owners that um, would potentially be negatively impacted if they were not able to offer the same services as the folks that currently can. Um, I was at the town meeting where I believe there was a petition to change the bylaws to exclude um, cannabis marijuana-based businesses from all industrial zones, which at the time, I believe, and please keep me honest here, that that would have essentially created, for lack of better words, abandoned town, as there was no other zone at the time that was allowed. Um, so I think that, you know, the town is um, <coughs> rightfully nervous. It's a new industry that we don't know a lot about. There's a lot of unknowns still. Uh, we don't know how the market is going to shake out in a few years once there are other towns with operations in place. So I'm not um, specifically against the overlay. I think it's a, it's a good slow start approach. Um, I certainly suggest anybody who owns any of the industrial zones that feels that they're being uh, specifically impacted by this to speak up and make your case heard. Absolutely do that. Please do if you feel that way. Um, but as outlined so far, um, and I spoke to one of the planning board members last week who um, talked a little bit about this with me. And I think it's reasonable for now, and it's something that we can certainly look at in a few years, especially when these initial uh, host community agreements start to expire in a few years. I think the town can reevaluate how things worked, what does the market now look like once more towns have started these services, including the new uh, home delivery regulations that have been recently released, and, and see if, the, if what we've decided on makes sense. We can always change things later, but for now I think this is okay. It's a good conservative approach to start and see how the town is affected positively or negatively um, by these businesses coming in. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Zankowicz. Thank you. Um, uh, this, this topic, uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, overlay is, uh, uh, I, I worked on this a lot. This was, uh, um, uh, I'm still... It's still like item number two. Uh, we have to do it. We have to do the public hearing again because it appears that we're not having a town meeting this fall, um, which, which has the the the, the reason uh, the the reason I'm running uh, is because uh, I I I felt we were cheated uh, over the past few years uh, in a in a shuffle of. Uh, votes that were taken to accept marijuana use here uh, in Lakeville. Um, the, uh, at the ballot box, uh, we voted against it. Uh, and then somehow, and, and I'm, I'm only saying somehow because it takes too long to explain exactly how it happened, but uh, it, it turned out that, uh, that the town voted for it. Uh, and so I've been trying to you know, uh, bite my way back and get, get, get it into something, something controllable. Uh, since then, uh, if it was completely up to me, I'd have it eliminated. But, but for now, I'll, I'll just try to, you know, I'll get what I can and control what I, uh, uh, what's possible. It's not. Uh, uh, there, there, there's, there's no history at all, and there's no, uh, uh, there's, there's nothing you can say that we're going to get rich from it or, uh, or, or any of that sort of thing. And there's an awful, awful lot of history that can tell that can tell you that this is a bad, bad thing you do to yourself and people and stuff like that. And it just uh, the, the the idea of that how I ever got myself to a point where I, I'd have to talk about this in public of the uh, acceptability of the marijuana is just, uh, I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed that Hi. I'm sitting here talking about it. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Fleming. Well, on that note, I'd like everyone to know that I can't <laughs> pass a drug test. I've always passed a drug test. <laughs> um, but you know. <laughs> I personally don't use marijuana. I'm not against it. It's uh, a nice new revenue stream. However, there should be restrictions in place. Um, it should be monitored and controlled within a, a concentrated demographic area. Um, obviously, it shouldn't be near schools and, and things of that nature. Um, but ultimately, it should be controlled to the best of our ability as a town. And uh, again, I'm all for the money as long as it's a true net positive for everybody in the town of Lake. Thank you. No, thank you. Mr. LaCamera, question number four. And I think some of you may have touched on this, but as a follow-up to the previous question, Lakeville currently has six community host agreements in place. Is this number reasonable? Too few, too many. Please explain your viewpoint. Well, um, I don't have a problem with cultivation, the host agreements with cultivation. I have problems with uh, too many recreational uh, stores that mm -hmm. potentially could be available and I don't know the exact number but I believe it's five those those facilities can sell recreational I have no idea why the town of Lakeville would need five recreational facilities to sell marijuana um, Taunton has one Wareham has one uh, why do we have so many and I believe that we should have restrictions on uh, recreational marijuana. Okay, thank you. Mr. Medford. I also believe we should have restrictions on the number of CHAs. Uh, six does seem like a lot. Uh, I'd like to think not all six of those will happen. Uh, we don't know, they, they can come in if, if they like. They've already been approved. I, I'd like that we don't add to that if at all possible. Um, right now and on uh, you know, Kenneth Welch, they are, they're already you know, they're already growing there. They're getting ready to start selling recreational. Uh, they're talking about the spring. So it's already happening, um, but I, I don't believe we need to increase the numbers anymore. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Day. So I think Lakeville has found itself in an interesting position where I think all the interest on the cultivation side is the number of cold storage facilities that we have where um, my understanding is the proprietors of those locations like the fact that they can offer the ability to run off grid so that the people that they are cultivating, what do they need lots of? Lights. And lights cost lots of money. So you know, these are locations where they can essentially run for cheaper off of generator and such. And I think that's why we've seen this quick, big land rush of folks trying to come in town and set up these cultivation operations that uh, kind of feels like the opening scene to far and away where they're all running in with their flags to stake in the ground. So. I agree that there probably is a reasonable limit that we can consider setting. What that number is, I'm not ready to say. I think this is, again, uh, as mentioned in the, first, the previous question, it's a market that is still unknown. I think it's going to settle itself out, and there's only going to be so much opportunity, especially on the retail side, to go around. Um, I mean, I can think of, off the top of my head, at least three locations where I can go and buy alcohol in Lakeville. Uh, is that a reasonable number for retail? Does this just end up being down the road another item behind the shelf when you go to pick up a sandwich at uh, Savas Plaza? Maybe, I don't know. We're all gonna find out together in a few years. So I certainly think the CHAs are great in that they give us the opportunity to negotiate with these businesses, ensure that they're going to be a well-established business partner with regulations in place. And yes, I think it probably will shake out down the road that it makes sense to limit the number. I don't think, and I feel like I said this in my interview um, earlier, which is, I don't want to go and sign up for 40 of these things and just see what naturally happens. I wouldn't do that for anything that's in a regulated industry right now. That's just silly. That's not a common sense reaction. So, you know, with the five or six now, with a combination of cultivation and retail, um, I'm not surprised to see cultivation ran here, uh, given the opportunity for um, the, the, uh, 15 seconds. the growing here. Um, but retail, yeah, let, let's let's slow down. Let's see what what the market is going to bear. If this is um, if we're already over what it, it should be. Um, no, or come up with a reasonable number in the future. So I would agree some form of limitation, but not a ban. Okay, thank you. Mr. Zinkowitz. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I don't agree. Uh, uh, I, I want as few, uh, as, as few as possible, but one of the things that I, that I realize uh, is that you can't, uh, you, you can't as a town or as a, as a board of selectmen or, or a planning board or anything like that, uh, you can't choose the number 
uh, of uses you have. Uh, if what's good, uh, if if a use is good for one person, uh, the use is also good for his neighbor if he uses it exactly the same way. You can't. Uh, uh, you can't say, well, this is how many belong in this town. Uh, you, if it's, if it's, it's either good for the town or it's bad for the town. If it's good for the town, they can have 30 of them. If it's bad for the town, they can't have any of them. And, and that's the way it works in this country. Uh, I mean, you know, that, that's a nationwide thing. You, you, you can't pick how many uh, stores you want to have in your town. You have to either allow a store or uh, of some type or not allow a store of some type for some reasons that are well published ahead of time so it's fair to everybody. Uh, this, uh, uh, you, you won't be able to choose later of, of how many. That, that's the thing. You have to use some other terms. It, it's simply not, a, it, it's simply the law is against you. The, the law doesn't allow you to pick from one marijuana one to another one. And uh, so you have to approach it some other way than saying, well, I only want half of them. You have to find a reason why that uh, whether you like this idea or whether you don't like the idea. I happen to not like the idea. Okay. Uh, and so the, the best that we could come up seconds. with was this, uh, this overlay district that, uh, that, that narrowed down the size of, uh, uh, or the number of properties that could be used that way. And that's, that's the best we could do to control it, but because we can't Time. control it by number. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Fleming. Repeat the question, please. Sure. As a follow-up to the previous question, Lakeville currently has six community host agreements in place for the marijuana. Is this number reasonable? Too few, too many? Please explain your viewpoint. I think it's too early to tell. I mean, I think we're still in the infancy of it. We haven't really seen, you know, really what the fruits of that hanging tree are going to actually give us. Um, how can you really put a number on that yet? I mean, we need, we don't have the historical data to really make a, a good decision on whether that's the right number or not. Uh, and again, as a numbers guy, you know, I rely on financial data to help make business decisions. Um, it's too early to tell. I mean, as time rolls on, we may address increase, decrease, but nobody has a crystal ball at this juncture, and uh, I think it's too early to tell. So we shall see. Okay, thank you. Mr. Knox. So I think this is a, a great example of the lack of transparency, or maybe not transparency, but getting a point across so that everybody understands it, because we may have six host community agreements currently signed, but some of those are on a single address because the way that they're formed, a host of community agreement for medical cultivation needs to be in place and then you get a separate one for adult use. So mm -hmm. six sounds excessive. I do think we need to limit the number of addresses, but my point is six host community agreements doesn't mean six stores. Okay. It's different types of licenses, because I did a lot of research on this to find out more about it. Um, so in short, I would like to see the number of addresses capped, and do you, have a, do you have a number for that? I think there should be three establishments. Okay. Would be a nice number to say, that's what Lakeville has, that's it. But that might mean nine host community agreements, because each one may need or has applied later for a dispensary, but had grow community agreement in place. So okay. it okay. is confusing, but I do think the town needs to cap the number. Okay, thank you. All right, we're on to question number five with Mr. Medford. What do you see as the biggest challenge to the town's budget in the next five years? Well, uh, you know, paying for infrastructure um, right now we just got a new police station uh, and the new talk is to get a uh, new fire station people want to improve the schools can you blame them um, how are we gonna pay for all of this uh, these are the biggest challenges is trying to find out how we can possibly pay for all of these things and um, you know Nobody wants their taxes raised, and I don't want to raise anybody's taxes. That is the, the last thing I want to do. We have a, 
a lot of retirees in this town on fixed income do not want to see their taxes go up. So the, the challenge is um, how, how do we keep adding to the infrastructure without raising taxes? Well, I don't, I don't think that's possible. Um, and, you know, really we need to, to dial it back now. We've been doing a lot of adding for the last few years and uh, it, it might, might be time to you know, slow, slow that down a little and, and um, you know, stop trying to find creative ways to spend your taxpayers' money. Uh, okay. it. Thank you. Mr. Day. It's an excellent question. Uh, all of us at home have budgets to deal with and trying to figure out how working with the cost of everything going up every year is going to work. Uh, our tax levy in Lakeville, if the numbers haven't changed too far, is somewhere around the, the magnitude of 85 to 86 percent that the levy comes from residential taxes, and the remainder of that from businesses. So I think you know, we need to do a better job of identifying better long-term income streams from businesses that we could introduce to town somehow so that we can potentially offset some of the tax levy burden that is on the residents. Because it, it almost makes no sense to change the business tax rate when there's such a small amount of our levy coming in from it when we have so many small businesses with very small margins. Do we want to you know, make it harder for the small mom and pop businesses to do you know, business here? Uh, you know, our school budget is somewhere around 60% of the entire town budget. Um, and they have constant needs. Um, they've got more children coming into the system that have uh, special needs or need more assistance in learning English, so their costs are going to go up. Um, I strongly urge everybody to go to the fire uh, station's open house that's coming up soon. I spent a couple of hours with uh, Chief O'Brien last week as I've been going around and meeting with department heads and trying to get an understanding of what are their uh, concerns and what are their problems and you know, where, you know, are there things that have been overstated? And, just go in and look at the conditions those uh, men and women are working in, and then ask yourself if they need a new station or not. It's certainly going to be a lot of money no matter what it is going to be, but it's something that the town at least has to analyze. Right? The police station, it was a large bill. It's a big debt exclusion. But go, go now and look at what it's allowing our policemen and women to do that they couldn't before and the conditions that they had. Right? These are all you know, needs that are... Nobody wants to spend more money. 15 seconds. But there are certain things that we can do to enable us to be a bigger center. This library, right? The governor came here for the Triple E meeting. Why? Because we can host something like that here. Lakeville can be a hub of greatness if we give our people the tools to do it. So the budget is going to be very challenging. Um, we have a lot of things coming up, and I Time. look forward to negotiating them. Thank you. Mr. Zinkowitz. Uh, the biggest challenge, uh, I mean, I um, is, is always uh, uh, the schools. I mean, and it will continue to be as long as uh, uh, we fund them the way they do, the way we do. And there's no reason that that's ever going to change. Um, the uh, we're over. Um, uh, we we don't overfund them at this point right now. So it depends exactly on the politics of the time. Uh, right now, we've been having a lot of growth. And the growth, uh, our, our additional growth the last five years, say, or four or five years, uh, has has taken some of the pressure off uh, off of those awful arguments, or off of those awful arguments of school versus uh, um, uh, town uh, that used to that used to be, you know, only five years ago. And it and they they will come up again, and they'll come up again before you get a chance to. The, the uh, fire stations and things like that are so small compared to your your school operation. I mean, it, it's the biggest employer in town. It's the biggest expense in town. It's the biggest everything in town. And right now, uh, you, you don't. Uh, it's not noticeable because you have that 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 bit of extra money uh, that's that's coming in from the building from the building boom. But uh, that that's that can stop in three months. Believe me, that uh, it can just. Uh, and then we'll be back again to that. And I, I guarantee that school is a problem, and always will be. Thank you. Mr. Fleming. Well, in regards to the budget, um, having certain on Lakeville's finance committee, I think every year our budgets become harder and harder to fund. I think we've seen that. Um, and I also think in order to understand the budget process, you actually have to do the process. I've been in charge of many millions of dollars in, pro in budgeting, not only just being part of the Lakeville Finance Committee, but private entities as well. So I think you need someone who actually has 
done the budgets to actually make changes where they need to be. Um, if elected, you know, my primary concern is to safeguard all the financial assets of Lakeville. Obviously, to balance the upcoming fiscal year budget, um, look for ways to save the town money and create better e efficiency across the board, across all departments. At the end of the day, it's our money, your money, my money, everybody's money. Um, as far as spending goes, I think spending should only be done when it's value adding. And I think ultimately the public should decide what gets done. Um, again, there's only so much money in the kitty. Um, and really my agenda from a financial perspective would be Lakeville's agenda, the people's agenda. Um, and I would, I would adhere to that. And uh, as I've been saying all along in my campaign, um, it's about the people and the community. And um, my job is to be uh, a financial overseer to make sure that our tax dollars are being spent wisely. So we're not asked for another override. So we're not always coming short change for the next budget. So we don't have to worry about cuts. Again, the numbers don't lie. But I also agree with if we get the right people and process in place, 15 seconds. the numbers will usually take care of themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Knox. So I do think that the budget's gonna be a big issue over the next, it's probably forever, but uh, how do we address that? Uh, well, we can't spend what we don't have. Uh, do we cultivate the marijuana industry in town to try and get the money from them through the taxes that we'll gain? It's, it's an option, uh, but I think from the selectman's office standpoint, I just think that we can't fund projects that we can't currently afford, uh, and we just have to focus on what we have. And when we are faced with a big expenditure, it will have to go to the townspeople to either for an override so that they can choose if we go through. And that's with the recent Route 79 paving project that it's sort of unfortunate that we weren't able to do that because a lot of money was gonna be given by the state. We were only gonna fund, uh, I think, 10% of that project. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, the townspeople voted no on the override and we're gonna have to need something pretty good, I guess, for them to vote yes on it. And those are our two options. Either we have a, an industry like marijuana that can help to support and increase our revenue income or the taxpayers are gonna have to either accept that we go without or pony up. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mr. LaCamera. Yeah, as I said earlier, I have uh, 34 years of uh, municipal uh, budget experience. Um, a couple of things that, you know, going back when I was on the Board of Selectmen, one of the things we decided to do was we decided to go after grant money and grant money that would fund our projects. The high school, the middle school, the intermediate school, we got 59% of those projects funded by the state. The COA, we got, we got $600,000 grant, which was almost half of the cost of the senior center. The library that you're sitting in here today, we got a $2 million grant. There's no grant money for the police station. But every one of those projects were pretty much overwhelming supported by the taxpayers because they understood what they were voting on. To Mark's point, I think the 79 override, people were completely confused as to what they were voting on. Um, the Betty's Neck you know, acquisition, we got uh, multi-million dollars from the state to buy the Betty's Neck property of 483 acres, and we paid $1.1 million. So that's the approach that we took at the time. We had a feasibility study in 2006 to look at the public safety needs, and we decided the number one priority was the police station, and that to look at the, I was off the board after that, and they decided not to build a public safety facility, but just the police station. As far as the budget is concerned, uh, the budgets are gonna be a major challenge, you know, this year. The town's budget is $30 million. The uh, school budget of Freetown Lakeville is $40 million, and I can't remember the number at Old Colony. But, you know, the, ho the House and the Senate, just in the last couple of weeks, have made modifications to the Ed Reform Bill that are gonna change the calculations of the formula for the amount of aid. 15 that seconds. 
the amount of aid that we're going to get. And Freetown Lakeville, based upon the, the governor's budget, is only going to get $86,000 more than last year. And Old Colony is only got $18,000 more than last year. You know what that's going to mean? The town has to pick up the difference. So it's going to be a Time. challenge to, uh, to, to balance that budget. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are now going to go on to the last question of the evening, perhaps depending on time. Um, and that is for Mr. Day to start. Conservation is an important topic to many people in town. What steps as a community do you think we should take to maintain our town character while also being mindful of the state's mandate for creating 10% affordable housing? Great question. There's uh, definitely competing uh, themes on that. So the, the town is definitely... Uh, been struggling with you know, an increase in housing over the last few years and a number of projects that have come in. And for the affordable housing, just to kind of give a quick recap, the state mandates through uh, Mass General Law Chapter 40B that we have to have a minimum of 10% affordable housing, which the, they define what affordable means. And if we don't have that number, then there are essentially a, a, a number of uh, housing project density values that a builder can come in and kind of override what our normal zoning rules would require. So these projects that continue to come in, uh, we're somewhere, I think, between going to be right close to that 9 or 10% number when the current projects are that are approved, finished, and then hopefully we get back kind of some of the power the zoning board has to prevent those more dense um, projects. But on the flip side, I mean, conservation and green space here and open space is an amazing thing in Lakeville. It's one of the things that you know brought us here. And that's something that I hope that we continue to not just protect what we have, but also look at opportunities to evolve. I think the Betty's Neck purchase from 17 years ago was an amazing opportunity. Um, and I believe that debt exclusion is coming soon to expiring. So I think that was great for the townspeople then to have that resource available to us now. And as these projects come in, um, not just when we, you know, if we hit our 10% number today, but we continue to build in town, that's a, it's a moving target. It continues to go. It's not just a checkbox and we're done. But I think one of the things that we should try to do is partner with those builders that are coming in and saying, okay, so you want to do, whether it's a 40B project or something else, what can they build into them so it's not just row after row of house? How can they build open space into that project so that there is greenery and open space and meeting space or whatever it might be so that these projects are more community focused and not just somewhere that we can give people a spot to live? So it, it's, it's going to be a challenge. We have seconds. very few large parcels left in town um, for development, and property owners are certainly welcome to sell property they own, and we're limited in controlling what happens after the fact. But I think it's important, and um, I'm sure a lot of the folks here will have great other ideas, but it's a challenge. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Mr. Zenkowicz. Thank you. Um, I agree with Mr. Day to the extent that it's important. The uh, we, we have... Um, uh, we we currently wrestle with that with 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 that each you know each year, uh, and there's a bunch of committees that uh, you know wrestle with with that problem uh, until we actually get to the magic number and it's a and, uh, over the you know to satisfy 40B. Uh, you know we we sort of have to live with that. I, one of the things that not everyone understands is that every project out of the the three boards that uh, uh, make yes or no decisions on uh, um, um, developments like uh, you know uh, conservation or uh, planning board or ZBA or the health uh, uh, health department, they uh, every one of them. If if the people comp if if the developers comply with the law, they are approved. If they don't comply with the law, they are not approved. All of them are not. All of them that don't comply are not approved. All of them that do comply are approved. There's, it's never a decision of whether it's good or bad or whether you like what it looks like or anything like that. It just, uh, the, the law requires all of us here at the town and every town in, in Massachusetts to follow those rules. If it's legal, you have to approve it. If it's not legal, you have to disapprove it. So that said, there's a there are a bunch of ways of sneaking in open space into uh, our conventional developments, but it's really hard to do because 
it's Fifteen something seconds. that we try to that, that we try to make sure is going to last for more than 30 years and and, and, and most of the agreements you make to a piece of land are, are, are only 30 years, only last for 30 years. So it's not, it, 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 it isn't that easy. And there's, Middleborough has uh, a law like that. And it, they Sorry. have ones and they look ugly. Time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Fleming? Well, in addition to the budgets of the town, I obviously my priority is to keep the rural charm of Lakeville. That's why I moved here. I won't lie, I love living on a cul-de-sac. I love having 2.6 acres of land and Asa wants it be right around it. Uh, I'm not against having you know, apartments built. Obviously, it needs to be capped. Um, I think everyone should be given a chance to enjoy the opportunities and the fruits of our labor of the town of Lakeville. Um, but at the same time, I think we have to keep our integrity as a town. And with that being said, building should be kept at a cap. I'm all for growing as long as if it's the ultimate needs and wants of the town. And again, call me spoiled, but I, I like what, what we have. I like the scenic view. I, I think I've heard someone say it's like a postcard. No matter what time of season it is, I enjoy that. It's a great place to raise a family. It's a great place to retire. And um, my goal would be to, to keep that. But again, if we need changes, then we'll address those changes. But ultimately, the changes are the people's changes, not ultimately the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Knox. Open space zoning bylaw. Something that would create a mechanism so that if a developer came in and said, this 50 acre parcel, I want to put 40B houses on it, this open space zoning would then force him to put a significant percentage into open space, so it would be hiking trails, walking, or just left to be conservation land. Mm -hmm. But it'd be written in in a, a zoning bylaw to force them to do that. So we can, if we're forced to take in 40B housing, that they're going to be limited to 50% coverage with open space zoning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. La Camera. Yeah. First of all. Uh, 40B, uh, there's very few communities in the state of Massachusetts that have 10%, including the city of Boston isn't even close wow. to making that 10%. So um, to think that the state is going to force us to get to that 10%, I disagree with that. I always have disagreed with that. I'm very concerned about the number of housing units just in the last two years that have been approved. Over 300 housing units have been approved in the last uh, two years. That's going to have a significant impact on the services of the town, including uh, a number of students going to, going to our schools. So I'm really concerned about that. So I think one of the things we need to look at is, is to try to maybe put a moratorium on 40B right now till we figure out where we're going to go, a suggestion of a, a bylaw change by Mark, you know, might be a possibility. But um, I'm extremely concerned about that, that that's... One of the reasons why I'm running is because there's so many housing units that are under construction right now in the town of Lakeville. And that really bothers me. Okay, thank you. Mr. Medford. Well, all I'm hearing is build, 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 and uh, I, I want to stop the building. It's not up to me to stop, but it's up to all of us as a community. We have to stand in the way of this as much as we possibly can. Unless you want building, please, speak up and show up at meetings and try to stop the building if you can. Um, please, next building committee you're on, please don't take any more of our park land. This library, it's on park property. COA, park property. Police station, park property. Please stop taking our park property to build new infrastructure. There's seven priority areas at the, uh, in the open space committee that, that we've identified to try to protect in Lakeville. And um, on there, the Namaskit, what are they building by the Namaskit? A whole ton of townhouses. Uh, the Pocoy Brook, they're about to build some commercial property there right now. All this stuff is going through the boards right now. It's going right through. They seem very happy to approve it. I, I don't think the people of Lakeville really want this stuff approved. But really not much we can do to stop it now. Uh, Rhode Island Road, I just got in, invited to go to a walkthrough Friday morning, check out new townhouses that they want to propose. Was well, supposed to be houses, now all of a sudden it's townhouses, they can fit more in there now. 
it's less green space. We, we know they're gonna be building a lot by the hospital. Nothing can be done by that. But Mr. Knox was right. We could put some bylaws in this. You could have a lot of park space in there too, walking trails. You know, people talk about a dog park somewhere. There'd be some great things to force them to do this when, when they build there. Um, so, thank you. Thank you. All right, we've done our six questions and we have some time left, so we have a few more questions we can ask until we run out of time. At least probably one, maybe two. Okay? Everybody game? Yes, yes? Do we get to ask them or no? No, no, I do <laughs> <laughs> Good try, but didn't work. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna start, we, the lottery for them, for who started and where, sat, where they sat, we did also a lottery for the final three questions um, if we had a lot of time. So Mr. Knox will start, okay? And we'll follow around starting with him. Mm. All right, question number seven, Mr. Knox. Given the 4.1% increase in overall taxation this year, would you vote to offset residential taxes with an increase in commercial and industrial property taxes? Why or why not? I would not. Uh for one, you're going to punish a business that does not burden the school systems. And you're going to ask them to step up more, but they're not harming anything. OK. That's, That's your answer? Short and sweet. Sticking to it? <laughs> yep. All right. Ms. Tilla Camera. Well, I think one of the things we need to do is promote business. And uh, all the time, all the years that I've been on the board, I always said we wanted to continue with the one tax rate unless we had a significant um, tax base of uh, businesses and industrial. Unfortunately, the industrial park down at the T-Station, 50% of that property is all housing now, which was supposed to be industrial back in the old days. So if you change it, uh, you, you won't attract a lot of businesses. Like, I can't remember Freetown's, but Freetown, I believe, is 17 or $18. A thousand and ours is like thirteen dollars, and Middleborough is higher. They have mixed tax rates, but they have a bigger customer base to spread out the tax dollars, and I don't think that's a good idea right now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Medford. Well, I don't want to promote bringing in business by having the taxes too low. I think the taxes should be fair, and by that they should be a little higher than they are now for businesses and industrial parks. So, I I, I think we should have them pay their fair share and the whole town will benefit from it. Thank you. Mr. Day. So as I brought up in an earlier response, the residents make up around 86% of the tax levy for the town. So that means that any increase that we want to put on the commercial rates is essentially going to affect the remainder 14 15% of that levy. How much would we have to raise it to make it beneficial to the residents? Would we have to raise it to a point where every mom and pop shop says, my margin's gone? And we're going to end up with more empty space on all the buildings that we already have partial empty space in. So I don't think it's as easy as, should we increase it? it is there a benefit? Are we going to put people out of jobs because we've raised it to a point where our smaller businesses can't cope? Um, you're, you're increasing a percentage on what is essentially a small percentage of our income for the town. And think about for your own budgets how much you'd have to increase to make a dent in it. So. You know, without facts saying that it makes sense and we're not going to negatively affect every business in the town by doing this, no, I would not vote to change the commercial rate at this time. If it makes sense in the future, perhaps it's something we can look at, but right now I'm afraid that it would do more harm than good without seeing enough of a return for the town. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mrs. Zenkowicz. Could you ask me a question, please? Yes. Given the 4.1% increase in overall taxation this year, would you vote to offset residential taxes with an increase in commercial and industrial property taxes? Why or why not? I, I, I wasn't aware that there was a 4.1%. Uh, I, I don't accept that. But the, um, uh, no, uh, in, in short, no, I wouldn't no, change that. No, you wouldn't change the, uh, uh, at some point, At some point you would, you know, like, if, if you could identify a, uh, 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 a business, you know, like, like suppose Boeing 
came here and started building helicopters um, or, or something like that, where, where, where it was clear that somebody was making an awful lot of money and with an awful lot of uh, You'd think about it differently, but uh, we, we don't have that sort of thing. The closest thing we have is, uh, you know, like Target and Ocean Spray. And th we want to help them still. They're, they're still at, th at that uh, at that stage, or, or right. from time to time, uh, the uh, um, we have a lot of there's a lot of questions about cranberries are important to us, and that's not going real well right now. And so there, there's a lot you to think about. Okay, thank but you. But taxing them more isn't one of the good things. Okay, yeah. thank you, Mr. Fleming. <clears throat> well, I think commercial entities really should be paying their fair share, to be quite honest with you. It seems like every year our real estate taxes residentially go up every year, pretty much. I think the businesses should be paying their share, and then if asked, I think they're successful because of the people that make up Lakeville and the charm and setting that Lakeville has to offer. And I don't think it's uh, it should be out of the ordinary for them to be asked to kind of throw a little bit more skin in the game so we don't feel it as resident as much. Um, and I think it should be reviewed periodically so we can set a proper limit so that everybody is, is putting something in the kitty. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right, we're going to ask one more question and then we'll end the forum, okay? I think it's a good one. <laughs> and we'll start with Mr. LaCamera. How would you attract more businesses to fill empty areas zoned for business in town? Because there's a lot of them. Well, <laughs> it's a very difficult question to answer. Um, First of all, uh, as I said, the industrial park down at the T station now is full, and it's it's 50% housing. That that is a problem to me. But um, as far as other industrial areas, our own industrial park is full, you know, as well. The Millennium Industrial Park out on 44 is pretty much full. There might be one or two lots, you know, left. There's not a lot of industrial property available for our businesses here in town. And the reason why is because we don't have town water and we don't have town sewer. So where all those industrial areas right now all have town water, and that's why they've been developed. But one of the, one of the concerns that I have uh, and have had for a number of years is the Lakeville Hospital, the redevelopment of the Lakeville Hospital. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, two years ago, almost to be exact to the day, that um, Stop and Shop, I don't know if people know this, but Stop and Shop owned the Lakeville Hospital. And they sold it for a dollar. A dollar. One dollar. Uh, I wish the town had had the opportunity to purchase that property. But I, don't, I, don't, I wasn't on the board, so I have no idea whether the town was offered that. That particular area could be developed, you know, for businesses to attract businesses. But like anything else, you got the hospital there, you got the hospital needs to be torn down, you got the nurses' quarters that have been torn down, and they just auctioned off five of the uh, eight, five of the eight lots, and five of the lots is going for housing. Um, as you just pointed out, there's uh, fifteen seconds. Um, it's a lot of work needs to be done. That's the only thing I can tell you. Okay, Mr. Medford. Right, and, and just to make a clarification in the question, um, it's to attract more businesses to fill empty areas zoned for business, not just industrial. Go ahead. All right. Did you read the article last week? Commercial boom is coming. Right where the hospital is, it's happening. There's three parcels left for auction. They say they already have the buyers. When those people move in and that area gets redeveloped, everything in Lakeville is going to fill up. There's vacant properties now, but they're going away. The commercial boom is coming. Thank you. Mr. Day. So it's one of the things that does disappoint me when we drive downtown and we see a number of vacant businesses, uh, some very old buildings that are vacant, some newer buildings that have partial vacancy. And it, and it does make me wonder, well, why, why did these go up if they didn't have tenancies that were essentially guarantees? Um, as part of the, the master plan project that's going on right now, I'm, I'm hoping that there's a lot of thought being given into what are the facilities that the town either has or lacks. As Mr. LaCamera says, there's not a lot of town water or gas or sewer or anything around town. So they're, they're, it makes it difficult to draw some folks in. But we also have things that are changing that are outside of our control. So we know the MBTA plans to move and build a new station where the old McGee Chevrolet used to be. 
So you know, can we think about, you know, are there things that make sense for um, high traffic areas like that where people are coming and going, morning and afternoon? What kind of businesses thrive in those areas? Are there things where, you know, we could try to draw people in with incentives to fill some of those areas that are vacant or dilapidated? Um, I don't have a, a crystal ball or perfect answer here, but I think it's definitely something that the town needs to keep looking at. They need to consider in the master plan that's being revised to understand how did we get here in the first place? Is it just a sheer, you know, and, and as Zink said, we have limited control over the boards on saying, can this come here, can this not come here? If it meets the zoning laws and they're compliant, then they get approved. It's not as easy as saying, I don't like what you're doing. I don't want you here. Mm -hmm. um, but what can we do to incentivize people to not just build, but fill? Um, is there some way that we can work with them on bylaws to say, hey, the more occupancy you have, the more something else you get? Is there a credit? Is there something else? So I think we need to be creative because we are limited in some way um, due to our town's infrastructure and its capacity. Uh, we don't have some of the things that other towns do have, which partially seconds. makes us great and why we're here. But we got to be creative to work with what we've got. So how can we draw those people in? It'd be great to fill up all those empty buildings that are in 18 and 105 and then start going from there. So I look forward to hopefully filling those in the future. Thank you. Mr. Zinkowitz. Thank you. Uh, for, uh, to, to get more uh, development, the, uh, every time we've had a uh, master plan since, I believe, 2004, uh, uh, the first recommendation was to, that we hire a town planner. Uh, we have a lot of room in our uh, fee schedule for what we do with developers that we could we could probably raise quite a bit of money to get to pay for that person. Uh, having a professional on board would just provide some continuity, provide a backbone to all. You know, it, it, it's mostly uh, you know community effort, and uh, uh, because there's going to be a lot of um, uh, town meeting votes and stuff like that where you have to get support. Uh, but the, the the way to keep the ball rolling and you know and, and keep it going in the same direction is with a planner. Uh, another thing that the master plan always uh, looks for is uh, we, we voted to have a housing authority. Uh, the kind of house, we don't need just any old housing built here or just, uh, you know, first of all, I basically believe that uh, business is driven by houses. You know, uh, when, when you get enough houses, then they need stores, somebody will build the store. Uh, no, no one's going to want to buy, some, you know, they, the, the, the housing will... Uh, you know, will develop its own commercial along with it. Uh, we need a housing authority, and that helps with a lot of the senior uh, issues. What we're getting a lot more of now each year are people, uh, are seniors. E even though the town is growing, it's mostly growing by, uh, with senior people. Uh, the other, just as a, one of the reasons to get me instead of other people, uh, or, you know, as a selectman is because uh, uh, I am energetic and I'm a nut. I, I, you know, I push, I push and I pull and I talk a lot and and I and I claw at people, because, like for instance, the South Coast Rail. There Hi. isn't anybody in town that wants South Coast Rail. I'm sorry. And we have no nobody, nobody on the select board or nobody in town and the entire sorry. place even talks okay. about it. And I will talk a lot about it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Mr. Fleming. All right. Well, I agree with Mr. Day. Um, I think uh, all the open storefronts look like an eyesore. It kind of looks like the old Wild West and the tumbleweeds are blowing across the way. And I think we, as a community, can come up with a better way that that land could be used commercially. Um, uh, ways to do it. I like the idea of having a town planner and uh, issuing a platform, whether it be social media, but also maybe have a good old school brick and mortar comment box in the town hall where if you're not a social media person, you can put your little idea and thought, and maybe that could be one of the job descriptions of the town planner that can monitor and actually come up with the best based off of the data to say, hey, this is what the town ultimately wants. Can we do it? How do we do it? That's all. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Mr. Knox. Well, I, I think it's a tough question to answer from the town standpoint of filling a, a business location that a private entity owns. Uh, you know, if some place is vacant, it may be because the landlord wants too much rent and nobody can afford to rent it. He thinks he's got a gold, gold mine and going into business on your own is an expensive venture and you take all the risk. 
Uh, so that's one issue to why those buildings may be vacant. It's not something that's in the town's control. But I do think that the public utilities, the water is key. You can't have a restaurant without a public water supply and a private public water supply well. It's very expensive and difficult to maintain. So if utilities were more available on 105 and 18, that would draw business in. I think that, that would be key. Uh, not tax them, no, don't raise the taxes on businesses because uh, that's gonna push them away. They're not gonna come even if there is water there. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, all right. Thank you all very much for answering our questions this evening. I'm gonna turn it back over to our moderator. We have them, each can say one minute. Oh, all right. Closing comment? Yes. All right, we're gonna let you each have one minute closing comments. One minute, timer's on. And we will start with Mr. Zenkowicz. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, uh, I want to, um, uh, there are an awful lot of new people uh, uh, in, we, we have a new fire chief, a new police chief, uh, a new town administrator, uh, and, you know, another half a dozen, you know, new faces, you know, over the last year in uh, town hall. Um, and uh, uh, they require help. Uh, they're not going to be able to teach, they're not going to be able to teach a new selectman uh, anything. Uh, we, have to, we have to go in there as a, uh, you know, pretty well, you know, with whatever ideas you have, they have to be pretty well set. You probably should know what the what the law is for what you can do, and then just start helping the people there do it. Uh, they're not they're not particularly working together right now, uh, and, but they're plenty talented, and they're you know, and they're good people, but but okay. but they need more help, and uh, I, I'm, I want to do it. Okay, Mr. Fleming. I'd like to say in closing, I think uh, this job is a serious job. I think the person that gets this position ultimately needs to be a people person. Um, with that being said, I'm a people person. I am a numbers guy, as I said before. Um, but ultimately, my door would always be open. My door would be open to any ideas, thoughts, and concerns of the town of Lakeville. And I think that's where we can implement change. I think ultimately, it will take a team approach and, and when working together as a team, I think we, we can accomplish anything. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Knox. Kind of at a loss for words. I mean, it's all been sort of vetted tonight. I, I appreciate everybody coming, this level of interest. I hope that this continues throughout the town for not only transparency, but people to be involved, uh, whether it be on the Board of Selectmen or people should step up for other committees. Uh, serve the town, volunteer, and take part. I mean, that's why we're all here, is we all want to help and serve. Uh, and I, I hope that we see this interest in the town for years to come, not just this one race. Okay. And thank, thank you, you, everybody, for coming tonight. <clears throat> Mr. LaCamera? Yeah, thank you, uh, Lake Cam, for sponsoring this event, and uh, Katie and Joanne for keeping us on uh, a straight line. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, as I said, I have 34 years of municipal experience, and I, I believe that I'm the right person, at least in the short term, to fill this position. I have a strong background working with state agencies and the legislature to benefit the town, which is very, very important. I will maintain open communication with town residents, boards, and employees. I think that that's been a problem. Um, I will make decisions based on facts and always what's in the best interest of the town. And I know this has been said by everybody. I'm committed to maintaining Lakeville's rural character and infrastructure. And I appreciate and support the importance of quality education. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Medford. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming to this very historic event for the town of Lakeville and Lake Cam. We've never seen anything like this here before. So you know, I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm glad each and every one of you came here. And uh, I think there's a lot of new interest in the town government here just from this uh, election process alone i think a lot more people will get involved and i hope to see more of you at 
some of the uh, boards and meetings within the town in the in the near future. I, I think you're here for a reason because 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 you truly care about Lakeville and and there's probably something you can do to help too. And uh, and I, I'd like to be there for to help you guys if if you can. Uh, possibly consider voting for Jesse Medford for selectman. I really appreciate it, and I, I won't let you down, and I will help take care of your town. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Day. I uh, equally want to share my thanks. It's amazing to see everybody here and almost every seat filled and everybody watching us at home later on. Um, I think this job is an extremely important one, but it's also no bigger than any individual in town. So should I, should I be uh, humbled by your selection on November 5th, um, I will certainly do my best to represent everybody's views and everybody's desires and try to make sure that everybody is heard in a way that is respected. Um, I've been spending the last couple of weeks going around and meeting with the fire department, the police department, the school department, uh, the library, because I think it's important to be able to come in and understand some of the challenges our departments have today. And for you, one of the things that they've all said is they are just astounded with the amount of support that the community brings to them as well. So please keep doing that for all of our departments. We've lots of great people doing lots of hard work um, in those departments and others at town halls, sometimes with very little resources. Um, I, I hope you'll consider you know, my lack of experience at the town level, not negative. I've got over a decade at the Commonwealth level working with emergency management time. and infrastructure. And Katie said time, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you all for answering the last issue and clarifying your last few statements. And now I'll turn it over to Kate. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. I have to admit that when I first came into this, I was a little bit nervous. And I really appreciate how everyone stayed on point and everyone was very polite because it makes me feel like we can do this again and again. And I, I, I love to, to know that. Um, and I would remind everyone that we're, uh, election day is November 5th, and that will be at Ted Williams Camp from 12 to 8 p.m. so that we will see you all at the polls. Thank you very much.